should have had a go at writing a little bit about the language. So remember, when we're talking about language in writing, if this works, and we're talking about the sort of interior bits of the writing, so such as the vocabulary choices, um, the language techniques, the similes, alliteration, personification, um, all of those bits and pieces we looked at earlier, those techniques we picked out earlier, um, and the tone, mood, or atmosphere of the writing. So think for a moment, what have we said the tone or the mood of this poem was? That's right, we've said it has a joyous tone, don't we? So we have talked about the fact that Wordsworth has created a joyous tone, a joyful mood. It's quite a happy poem. Right, we're going to move on and talk about structure. Now, I know for sure that my English groups will remember this house, but everyone else remember that we talk about a piece of writing as a house, and then the structure is how the whole house is put together. OK, so it's things like the foundations, what the house type it is, how many floors it has, where the stairs are, um, where the windows and doors are, um, what bits have been added or changed, what you can see from the outside and the roof. OK, so if we were talking about a house that's been put together, we talk about all of these things that make the house up, don't we? Now, when we're talking about structure, we can link this with this idea of sort of the the um, raw bits of the house. So in terms of structure, in terms of writing even, structure includes the genre, the narrative viewpoint and perspective, how it starts, how many chapters, stanzas, so stanzas will be linked there to our poetry, and um, how different sections are linked, how the plot, character, tone, develop and change, whether there are any repeated ideas, the dialogue, how it ends, whether the plot is in chronological order. And I'm going to add another one here for um, poetry, because in poetry, we also have a rhyme scheme and meter. OK, earlier, if you were doing the challenge, you learned about iambic tetrameter that would come under the meter. We are now going to have a look at the rhyme scheme of the poem. OK. We're going to have a look at the rhyme scheme, which helps contribute with some of these other bits and pieces to the overall structure, the building of the poem. OK, right. Let's get going. So this poem has a regular rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, C, C. I'm going to read out the first stanza and I'm, I want to know if you can pick out where those where that rhyme scheme is okay i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills when all at once i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze so hopefully you've picked out there that the rhyming happens at the end of each of the lines now i have put here for you where the letters link to so for example cloud a links with crowd which is also a so those two words rhyme and then hills and daffodils rhyme so they are the b and then the last two lines trees and breeze also rhyme with the two c's being there now what we call that bit there i'm sure some of you remember is a rhyming couplet because the two lines rhyme next to each other they are a rhyming couplet they are coupled together at the end okay so what's really important to remember here is that there is a regular rhyme scheme so this is really important to remember there is a regular rhyme scheme of a b a b c c that's it a b a b c c and each stanza ends in a rhyming couplet so each stanza ends with a rhyming couplet. All of them end with two lines rhyming. OK, now it's really important now to consider why has Wordsworth chosen this rhyme scheme? It's not random. He's not done it just just because he has deliberately chosen this rhyme scheme, just like he's deliberately chosen the language in the poem. Now, I'm going to read out. 
the first stanza again. And I want you to think, what does the rhyming add to the poem? What does it add to the way you, as the reader, feel? Okay? I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Okay, so what does the rhyme there add for you as the reader? What would be really lovely is if you just post those ideas in the stream now, because it'd be nice to see if all of us feel the same or if maybe we've interpreted it in different ways, okay? I would say that the regular A, B, A, B, C, C rhyme scheme has created a joyful tone. It's helped add to the joyful tone of the poem. It's lighthearted because of the rhyme. It's regular, so there's aren't, not, there aren't any sudden surprises. It um, has a bit of a sing-song feel to it. Ultimately, it's quite a happy rhyme scheme that links with the tone of the poem. So Wordsworth has deliberately chosen that rhyme scheme to link with the tone of the poem. OK. OK, hopefully that's made a bit of sense to you. What we're going to do now is we're going to start to plan a what, how, why paragraph about structure because I know that some of us have sometimes got a little bit worried about writing about structure because you think it's a different thing to writing about language now that isn't the case okay so you still write about it in exactly the same way as you would have written about language okay and we're going to focus on the question how has the poet created a joyful and joyous tone this is the same question as you answered just now about language okay so hopefully this will work and I'm going to try and write some notes on here for you, okay? Right. What? Remember what we need to put in the what section. We need to say what the poet is doing. What is Wordsworth doing? So he is using, Wordsworth uses, or used, a, who uses, a, an A, B, A, B, C, C rhyme scheme. to create a joyful tone, okay? Something you could add in here as well, uses a regular A, B, A, B, C, C rhyme scheme to create a joyful tone. Now remember, if we're thinking about our academic writing, we might add an adverb at the start. We might also think about some different academic verbs, okay? So in the what, we need to say what Wordsworth is doing, just as you would do in the language question. So Wordsworth uses a regular A, B, A, B, C, C rhyme scheme to create a joyful tone. Now we need to tell, say how it does this. OK, so we've said what it does, but now we need to explain ourselves a little bit, don't we? And we need to include a quotation in this section. Now we're going to have a little look back at the poem so we can have a look and see which which quotation we're going to use. I think we'll take the quotation from the rhyming couplet at the end. So we put the quotation in there. What do we need to make sure we put around it? Yep, quotation marks, well done. So we need to make sure we put quotation marks around the quotation. So I've added in my quotation there. Now, I'm gonna choose two words out of that quotation to really focus in on, and you're right, we need to use we need to use the two that rhyme, so trees and breeze. Okay, and then we need to explain ourselves. So this is the quotation. That is our full quotation. Here we've zoomed in on it. We now need to explain it. Okay. So I'm going to write the explanation briefly in note form for you. So we could say the rhyming couplets, um, which are part of the rhyme scheme, help to create 
be light-hearted, sing, song, feeling, to the poem, contributing, which is a fancy word to use, to the joyful tone, okay? So here what we've done so far is we've got the what, we've got some notes here, and then we've chosen our quotation that we would need to introduce using those um, sentence starters that we know. This is exhibited in the quotation. The words, trees and breeze, and the rhyming couplets, which are part of the rhyme scheme, help to create a light-hearted, a light-hearted sing-song feeling to the poem, contributing to the joyful tone. Now remember that these are notes. You might change this. So you might not want to talk about just the um, the rhyming couplets here, um, but that's fine. This is up to you. It's up to you when you get to it. But these are just some notes that I'm making now. And what do we need to do in the why? We need to talk in the why about what the writer's overall intentions were. So remember, he's created this joyful tone about this memory of this walk and created this sing song, light hearted feeling using the rhyme scheme. So you could say here, perhaps Wordsworth. Um, wants the reader to feel positive about looking back at memories. That's one explanation you could do. Or you could say something like um, Wordsworth um, is possibly trying to explain just how happy feels about the memory of the walk okay so in this section remember we need to be tentative okay we say perhaps we say possibly we're not we don't know for sure we can't read his mind okay so we're saying what we think the writer might have been doing when creating the poem now this shouldn't be new to you you've done quite a few what how why paragraphs before but that's just a brief explanation of how I would plan it. And it does mean that you can now use that for the next bit of the lesson. OK, OK, I pulled it back up onto the big screen here. So remember, we have answered the question, how has the poet created a joyful and joyous tone? We have made notes. So these aren't full sentences. We have made notes in these boxes here. Your task is going to be to answer that question. How has, does the poet use structure to create a joyful tone? Okay, I have put sentence starters for each part of the what, how, why in the Google form. Your task is to complete those sentences, all right? So I'm not asking you to write a massive paragraph. I'm just asking you to break it down and finish the sentences in the Google form. If you want, you can pause the video back on this page so you can use my notes. But you can also use your own, okay? It is entirely up to you. But what you need to do is you need to complete the sentences in the Google form, all right? They're not marked because I want you all to have a go. I can't write a right, right or wrong answer for that. It is your interpretation. Um, we will read them and see what you come up with. And I'm sure some of them will be really, really interesting. But you need to remember to answer the question, how does the poet use structure to create a joyful tone? That is your task. The challenge task is to complete those sentences. And then I want you to complete your own paragraph discussing how the poet has used iambic tetrameter to create the tone. I have put a separate explanation as to how you might have done that just before that question, okay? So your task, complete the sentence starters, answering the question, how does the poet use structure to create a joyful tone? Give it a go. If you're stuck, remember where you can post your questions, okay? We are there to help you, even if it's to help you come up with an idea. That's brilliant. We actually would really love that, to help you pull out some of your ideas and make them even better than they already are, all right? Well done, Year 7. You have worked really, really hard today. So just finish up with those bits. If you're stuck, post in the Google Stream. Google Stream, the stream on Google Classroom. But well done today. And 
I'll be back with another video tomorrow. Well done.